In Touch with Gene Heck, a public affairs presentation of TV35, keeping you in touch with the issues and personalities of Claremore and Rogers County. And now, here's Gene Heck. Welcome to In Touch. Everyone's concerned with the increase in crime rate. Today on the show, we have two special guests, Carolyn Estes from the Rogers County Sheriff's Department and Jenny Sarton from the Claremore Police Department. Thanks to both of you for joining us today. Jenny, I'd like to start with you first. How long have you been with the Police Department? I've been with the Claremore Police Department just about eight years now. I'm a sergeant and I'm currently working with the Special Investigations Division with the department. Mm -hmm. Carolyn, can you tell us a little bit about your background in law enforcement? Yes, I've been with the Rogers County Sheriff's Office almost five years. Two years working on, on a crime prevention grant, federally funded. Two years in the office as office supervisor. And now I'm in the field as a field deputy, uh, mainly working with crime prevention. Jenny, can you tell us what's a typical day like for you? I can't routinely tell you that there is any typical day. Every day is different and I have a lot of things happen and nothing, t nothing no day that I have is routine. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with the stress associated with your job? You just learn to, to uh, vent it in different ways. You have hobbies and I have children and I work a lot with them. Mm -hmm. How about you, Carolyn? Do you have any techniques for dealing with the pressure? Yes, I just, uh, I drive back home and, and the drive from work to home is my solitude time my wind down time and I enjoy the the view of the lake. Mm -hmm. So you both have ways to cope with the stress of your pretty demanding jobs. And you get used to yes, it after a while. Jenny, why do you think the crime rate is increasing? I know there's been a lot written, we hear it in the media over and over again about increasing crimes. What do you attribute this to? I think that we need a, a stricter um, penalty for crime breakers. Um, I mean for um, suspects that are convicted, I don't think that the crime uh, punishment fits the crime anymore. They're getting off too easy and we have a lot of juvenile crime and the juveniles are not being handled um, and dealt with the way that I believe is necessary if they commit an adult crime. I believe they ought to be punished as an adult. That might stop a lot of it. I think, I think too, once we do get them incarcerated, they're not staying in prison long enough. Mm -hmm. They go down and before we know it, they're back on the streets. Uh, if we send them down and the judge gives them or the jury gives them two years, they're back on the streets in just a matter of months. months. And it's, it's a sad situation because we keep seeing the repeat offenders. And we have several that we're very familiar with that just keeps coming back through the system. They're unable to enter society as a normal person because uh, society does not want to accept them so they have to revert back to crime again. That's, uh, they're not going to go out and get a job working at McDonald's for four, four and a quarter when they can go out and still make $425 a day. Mm -hmm. Do you think maybe the economy and drugs today also play a role in that? I think it's, uh, it, it, it interacts with it. I think so too. Uh, mm -hmm. If you have a, a very expensive drug habit, say four or five hundred dollars a day, a normal job is not going to give you the dollars that you need to support that drug habit. Mm -mm. So we do have career criminals that steal strictly to support their drug habits. Mm -hmm. Do you find that, um, like on patrols, do you patrol in areas that do have higher crime rates? When I was on the street, we were, um, you, you notif located the crime areas, the higher crime areas as far as the burglaries go, and you would go to that area and you would patrol that area. If you, if you knew of a specific area, I always made it a point to um, be in that area more frequently than than any other area. Mm -hmm. And overall, how do uh, Claremore and Rogers County compare as far as statistics on number of crimes? I know Tulsa this year has just skyrocketed in the number of violent crimes. Is that true in, in this area? In the county, we are seeing a slight decrease in our burglaries, residential type. Uh, but yet we're seeing an increase in, in other types of crimes. So it swings from one type of crime to another. Uh, when we can apprehend say uh, specific burglars and shut that down in, in a specific area. That kind of quiets it for a while until somebody picks up and moves into a different area. So it's, it fluctuates back and forth. It's really hard to keep a, a figure and give you a, an exact figure on crime rate because of that. Mm -hmm. Jenny, what about the state of Oklahoma? How do we compare state-wise compared I'm, to other uh, states? I believe I heard a statistic, uh, Uniform Crime Reporting Handbook, which the FBI submits every year, so that we were 10th in the nation. Mm -hmm. 
as far as crime in goes. the top 10 states in the top then? well in as top um, 10 out of the 50 mm -hmm. states we're ranking so pretty high for the number of population right based. I think it has a lot to do with the economy just not a lot of jobs out there mm -hmm. Uh, we had an opportunity last week to go out in the field, and Jenny, you were kind enough to, to come with us to kind of show us a little bit about both how we can keep our homes safe and how to, women can be safe in parking lots. I know there's been a big concern about that issue of crimes against women. Let's take a look at that video right now. Wayne, this looks like a nice, safe house. Here we are in a residential neighborhood in Claremore. Tell us, is it really safe? Uh, this house is going to be relatively safe, uh, especially the front entryway. The door is going to be a solid, either a solid core door. This door particularly is, is a steel door. Uh, the glass in the door is safety tempered. It, somebody's really going to have to hit this hard to break it. Okay. Uh, it does have a deadbolt lock on it. Uh, we recommend that all the exterior doors to a house uh, have deadbolt locks. Uh, for single people, the mailbox has no label on it uh, to designate that it's a a uh, single family home or a, a single parent home maybe. Uh, uh, the letters, the, the numbers on the house for the residents uh, are big. Uh, when this house is lit at night, uh, these are going to show, up, show real up real well. well from the street uh, then. Right. The, uh, a patrolman would be able to see this real easily if he had to find this place in a hurry. I also noticed too that there's, we've got a good light right here right. on the front porch. Right. So I guess at night it'd be important to keep that on and keep this area well lit. Certainly. Okay. Certainly. Okay. Uh, Anything else about the front porch that either makes it uh, safe? Well, this house also has uh, uh, pretty extensive exterior lighting. Uh, it goes continually around the front of the house, uh, covering covering most of the front area. I noticed too that they've kept their shrubs nice and trimmed and low to the ground. Is, do you recommend that? Yes. Uh, it's, it's best to keep them low, low in front of the windows. That way it's easier to tell if the window has possibly been broken or if somebody uh, has tried to enter the, enter the house through there. Also, people can't hide behind low shrubs. It's harder for someone to, to keep from being seen that way. Uh, so keep them below the window level. Is that that's correct. Recommend? That's okay. correct. Then what about exterior windows? I know we've got um, windows here. Now this is the garage of the house, and I notice here they've left the window open. That's Tell right. Tell us about that. That's something that can be really dangerous. A large percentage of, the, of women that are assaulted are assaulted in their own home. Uh, the reason for that is because they've left a window unsecure, and while they're vacuuming or doing the laundry or, or whatever, something that's creating some noise inside, they don't hear the individual getting into the house. Uh, they leave windows unsecure, or they may leave a door unlocked while they're there by themselves. And uh, we recommend that, that if a female is at home by herself, that she, she always keeps the doors locked, uh, you know, at least as much as possible. Uh, in this situation, this one leads into the garage, and most people uh, who have windows in their garages, they leave the garage door unlocked. Uh, because they have a garage door, they don't they don't necessarily feel like they need a lock. Right? They need it. They use an automatic garage door opener. Uh, that can cause some real problems because once you enter the garage, then the house is unsecure, and they pretty much got a free hand from then on. So basically, it's important to remember to keep all doors and windows locked, and especially you know easy access points like the garage, laundry room, utility Certainly. room areas. Certainly, you bet. Okay. You bet. Let's take a look over here at the side of the house. Is there anything over here on this side of the house that you want to point out to us? You bet. Uh, the garage doors on this house are steel. Uh, the windows are small and and high. That way, that that deters somebody trying to make entry through a window at the garage door. Uh, this side of the house is also lit by an exterior light. Uh, we find that most burglaries uh, occur on a on a side of the house or maybe even in the rear. Uh, to avoid lighting. So, so the better lit you can make your house, the better off you so are. So you suggest lights just about everywhere on the outside? An exterior light in as many places as, as you can put them. Okay. What about that. like the garden patio type lights like we saw in the front? Anything that lights the front of the house, okay. all that's good. Anything that, that exposes the, the exterior of the house, the windows, the doors, anything that keeps those areas well lit. Okay. Let's just check and see here. This door is locked, so that's good. You that's want to right. make sure that, that when you're gone, the, that all the exterior doors are, are okay. secure. Anything else about the door that we want? Well, this door in particular, uh, unfortunately, it doesn't have a deadbolt lock, and we, again, would suggest that all the exterior doors have deadbolt locks on them. Okay. And this type of door just looks 
like yes, a, a, a solid door? steel or, or a, uh, um, uh, a solid core door is always better. Uh, what are called hollow core doors are usually used for interior doors, but some of them have been put on exteriors. Those are extremely easy to push through and push in, and they're not very secure. Mm -hmm. Okay, we got some windows over here. I love windows, I know a lot of people do, but I guess they increase the chances for, for break-ins. What do we look for in windows? What you want in a window is something that doesn't have a, a latch at the top that's easily jimmied. Uh, so this is, this is a good these window. These windows are good windows. Okay. They're thermal pane glass, so they're, they're double thickness. Uh, the latches on them are at the bottom inside the window sill, so you can only open them manually from inside. What you want to do is, is discourage any easy entry. It's going to be hard to jimmy. Uh, in order for somebody to enter that window, they're going to have to break it and make some kind of noise. Right. So this is an example of a good window and what we'd, we'd right. like to see in That's it. That's what we'd like window. to see, you bet. Okay. Let's say these people are um, on vacation and they're not at home right now and one of the neighbors were to hear broken glass or see somebody running from the house, at what point do you recommend that somebody should call the police? Anytime that you, that you hear something of that nature, uh, you, you observe someone running from a house or you look out and you see an, uh, an open window that wasn't open before, at that point you want to you contact the police. Uh, we discourage somebody from getting too involved themselves because it, it presents a danger to themselves. We're trained to handle this, those kind of incidents, and, uh, and we don't come by ourselves. We come in numbers. And I guess that's where the alert neighborhood alert programs would really be effective. Right, you bet. If you see anything unusual, go ahead and call and let that's you guys right. do your job. That's right. Okay. That's what we look for. Okay, we're now at the back of the house, and we got these French doors. A lot of people have patio doors. Right. Patio doors, these, these doors are, of course, more secure because you have less of the glass area. Uh, the patio doors, more and more, they're, they're, they're making those secure. What we recommend is they have them now where you can pin them at the bottom. Well, when I say pin, I mean there's a hole drilled through both frames, and you, there's a metal pin that you insert through, through those. Uh, you can put those at the top and the bottom, and they also have a bar that would drop across and secure the door from sliding back and forth. What, what you're trying to encourage there is that the person has to break the glass to enter. Uh, that's, that's the big key. If they have to make noise, they're going to call attention to themselves. At that point, a neighbor or, or a passerby or someone is going to observe that, and hopefully they're going to contact us and we're going to respond. Uh, the back of this house isn't well lit from the house. However, they've got uh, two exterior lights on poles. Uh, if you don't have that luxury, what we might suggest is they have motion detector lights or lights that turn on only when they detect motion in the area. Uh, those are a good thing because they startle, that, startle a would-be burglar or assaulter and uh, tend to frighten them off. What about alarm systems? Uh, what's your experience with those? Do they work? You know, how effective are they really? Alarm systems are effective. They, they work and, and they're a good idea. The, we, we get several uh, false alarms, you know, a day due to alarm systems, but, the, but we still recommend that you use them. It's better to be too safe than not safe enough. Officer Stinnett showed us what we can do to be safe at our houses. What can we do at a parking lot? Well, one of the general rules that I would um, believe to say would be look in the parking lot before you stepped out of the door. Make sure the area is clear of anybody hanging around, just sitting in their cars, or any persons that are standing in the parking lot that don't act like they belong here. Um, as you're walking to your car, continually visual the parking lot, um, visually scan the parking lot. Make sure that there still are no people, stragglers that are in the parking lot. Make sure your keys are in your hand and you're aware what key that goes into the door as you're approaching your vehicle. I would uh, discourage walking in between parked cars. Look for vans um, and continue looking for people that are sitting in cars, possibly perpetrators that would be willing to either um, jump out and surprise you before you had a chance to um, find out what you're doing. Um, Have you found in your experience that it's better to look like you're assertive and you know you've got control of the situation? Yes, I would. Um, I would make, if there is a perpetrator, make him believe that 
you know what's going on and that if you're aware of your surroundings and then if you are attacked that you're aware that that you might be able to fight back so just like we've done don't walk between parked cars well if like you that. have to walk between parked cars make sure that you look in the back seat of okay. your vehicle there may be somebody like i left my window down i would discourage that leaving your window down always lock your vehicle make sure that it's locked before you get out of it look in the back seat in the back anywhere that someone okay. might, might be might hiding, be hiding mm -hmm. too. I saw you. yeah i'd um Make sure I get in my car. Just continue looking around the parking lot. Make sure there's no, nobody behind you. I understand that a lot of times people are attacked, that they're grabbed from behind mm -hmm. and attacked. Let's say you are assaulted. What are some things that you need to have in mind to call the police? What I would make sure, sure that you can get a vehicle description, um, uh, suspect information as good as possible, um, clothing description, any kind of... Um, if you can get a tag number of the suspect's vehicle, their height, their, their eye height, color. eye color, um, clothing description, the direction of travel that they left the area in, if all possible. I know there's been a lot of, of crimes against women in the last couple mm -hmm. weeks. What can we do otherwise to protect ourselves? Just be real alert um, of your area. A lot of women aren't alert. They walk to the car, they don't really know where they're at. They're walking, they forget where they park at. Remember where you park at as you're leaving. Say, well, I parked right here in this area. And as you're walking up to the door, um, continue. Even if you're going in, make aware of your surroundings. Is and it he's best at the to do line. all your, your errands and shopping during the daylight, if possible? If possible, if you're if you're suspect that you, that you may be accosted or, or attacked at night, then try to get all your um, your errands done during the day or in your shopping that you have to do. Okay, Jenny, we've seen why it's important to stay alert, okay? Be aware of your surroundings. Let's say you are assaulted, and what, how would you respond? Why do you say it's so important to be calm? What is that? How does that protect a woman? Because the police are, we want to help people, and a lot of your assaults, uh, people tend to get overexcited, and we can't obtain the information that's necessary so that we can apprehend the perpetrator or the suspect that has committed the crime. They get all upset and they start screaming, and, and we can't obtain the necessary information that can, we can uh, quickly apprehend them with that information that the victim can give us. Um, we can't do our job. Do you find also too that panic makes someone freeze and not able to think clearly about right. anything in that situation? Right. They they get real upset and they and they panic and they um, don't think clearly. We just need to remain calm. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's been a lot recently as far as in the news and media about crime against women. Why are women today at risk for crime? I think they put themselves in a position where they become victims of crime, and uh, they are not they ought to work at where they won't be victims of crime, be alert and be able to defend themselves if a situation happens. Carolyn, you have anything else to add to I that? Think, I think too, women are much more mobile than we used to be. We're out shopping a lot and uh, we're highly visible. So that puts us in a very vulnerable position. Stay alert and uh, stay cautious mm -hmm. and travel in pairs if you can. The old buddy system is a good idea. Never go anywhere by yourself if you can keep from doing that. Most women today, too, if they're working or have a family, they're so busy thinking of other things, they don't think they're going to be the victim of a violent crime. They're just in shopping, doing their, their daily activities, mm. and then all of a sudden, I they're guess... They're not alert of their surroundings when they come out into a parking lot, like the latest incident in Tulsa. Uh, she probably wasn't aware uh, of what was fixing to happen, aware of her surroundings, and he came up behind her and grabbed her. Mm -hmm. So be alert at all times and is your best advice for women on how right. to protect themselves. We have to get away from being a very trusting society. Uh, we're always so eager to trust our fellow man and now we have to be much more apprehensive when we're out and about. Mm -hmm. What's your opinion, Jenny, on should women protect themselves? I mean, should, uh, you read all this about mace, whistles, mm -hmm. guns. Mm -hmm. I know. would I would discourage uh, unless someone is uh, fully qualified in the use of a gun, although Oklahoma state law prevents you from carrying a concealed weapon, unless you are an armed guard or an ar armed guard or a police officer and you have to be to and from work, if you are an armed security guard, you cannot carry to transport a loaded firearm in your vehicle. And I, I believe, uh, and I've discouraged a lot of people against this idea because if they're not fully qualified to use it, it will be taken away from them and possibly used to um, harm them. Mm -hmm. What about guns in the home? Uh, I, I, sometimes if you, I might discourage that also because if a burglar breaks in, he'll steal your guns or maybe use them on you also, unless you're fully qualified to have a farm or if you are a police officer, law enforcement agency. Mm -hmm. 
I know this morning on the news there was a big story on sexual assaults, and I guess that's one thing that concerns all of us as women. Carolyn, what's your advice specifically if someone approaches you and you think that that's going to be the outcome as far as how to deal with uh, that type of perpetrator? If I had the idea that that would be the outcome, you have two choices in an assault situation, fight or flee. And you have to make that decision very quickly. And that's why you need to be alert of your surroundings so that you can make the decision. If you have the opportunity to flee, that is your best option. Uh, and you need to know what direction you can flee in safely and do it at the top of your lungs. If there's anyone wa within hearing distance, but if not, save your energy and use it for the fight in case you need to fight. In any way possible to stay alive. Right, stay alive. That's the main thing and be very alert. I know we mentioned earlier about panic and freezing. I guess that would be the type of situation that you'd want to be alert of your surroundings so you're not caught and exactly. a victim. And that way you wouldn't freeze. You would think it ahead, know ahead, have a plan of action in your mind in case I was going to be a victim. What would I do? Play a what if game with yourself. Uh, what if I'm caught in this situation and somebody is coming up? How would I react? If you think it out and have a game plan ahead, you don't have a tendency to freeze so quickly. And on the subject of mace, um, I really discourage that. In Oklahoma, our winds change so quickly. And if you're outside in an outside environment and you are spraying mace, you might spray it and it might blow back in your face. So I really discourage mace and, and that type of uh, uh, weapon that you would carry with yourself. I know earlier Jenny and I were talking about the Neighborhood Watch program as being real important in helping everybody in the neighborhood mm -hmm. be alert of what's going on as far as neighborhood right. crime prevention. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about how that works. Well, um, I, I'm real particularly uh, aware of my neighborhood and I know strange cars that drive down the neighborhood. I know if somebody's gone um, in the area, my neighbors always notify me if they're going to be gone out of town. I collect their mail for them, uh, keep their yard work up, make sure there's any vehicles. I always get an emergency number where I can contact somebody and the police department has a house watch program that they give us when you leave town. You just call the police department and give us your name and the pertinent information and we'll go by and we'll check on your house a couple times a day to make sure that everything's okay. And if there's anything particularly strange, either we'll contact a trusted neighbor or we'll contact you in person at the location that you gave us. Mm -hmm. So basically, if you know you're going to be out of town, notify the police. Right, have, have your a house watch program, right. I guess that's the biggest uh, way to figure out that no one's there with all the newspapers in the right. yard News and mail Oh, it's really bad. Up. You drive by, I was on patrol and drive by and there's like you 30 newspapers in the yard, uh, mail crammed in the mailbox, there's no lights left on in the home, nobody in your neighborhood is aware of where you're at if something like if your house caught fire or something where we can get a hold of you at. Mm -hmm. And I think it's necessary that you do make the necessary contacts before you do leave town for your own protection. I know a lot of people, and I've even been guilty of this, of hiding a key outside the so house. That's the wrong idea because they will find it. They will find your key and be easier for them to break into your house. Mm -hmm. What about your Crime Stoppers program? I know you've been real involved with that with the Claremore Police Department. Right, we do have a Crime Stoppers. It's 341-7600. Uh, all information uh, is taken, your name. You don't have to leave your name. We give you a code number and it's all remain confidential. We do pay rewards up to $1,000. So if anyone were, were to see anything unusual, go ahead and call in. Right, okay. right, call in, we'll check it out. I'll probably personally check it out. Mm -hmm. How successful has that been for you? Just you recently I solved um, three burglaries, arrested three people, probably gonna arrest uh, two, two to three more, recovered over $5,000 in stolen property for some burglaries that we've been having in the area and kind of tied up a little burglary ring from some information mm -hmm. that we gained. So it's been real effective right here in Claremore? Um, it's been pretty effective. We're just now getting it um, into progress again. It was kind of stale there for a while. Okay, we talked about women and safety and how to keep our houses safety. Let's talk about kids. I know a lot of times kids are home after school alone. There's a lot more latchkey kids. Carolyn, what advice would you give to parents on principles or things they can instill in their children. You don't want to make them afraid and so fearful that they're going to be afraid of everyone. But there is an element uh, of uh, crime out there that we do have to make them aware of. There are two things that we're going back into the school systems in Rogers County and teaching our children if they are latchkey kids. If they walk home or they get off the bus and they notice that something doesn't look right, not to go in but go to a trusted neighbor, 
call the sheriff's office and let us come out and check the house before they go in. Uh, the worst case scenario would be if a latchkey child walked in on a burglary in progress with a burglar still in the residence. So we request them not to go in. The other thing that we're really having a tough time teaching our young people is that if they are at home alone, they need to keep the house locked while they're inside. But if somebody knocks on the door, they need to let them know without unlocking the door that there is someone in the house. Because nine times out of 10, before a burglar goes in, they will knock on the door and give the person in the house an opportunity to make their presence known. And if they choose not to make their presence known, there's a good chance the burglar will come on in. So we're asking children, make your presence known, but don't unlock the door and let a person in. Mm -hmm. So basically, again, be alert so that they're not the victims right. of crime too. Jenny, do you have anything else you wanted to add as far That's as kids? That's basically the same thing, you mm -hmm. know, and, and the kids can call the police department will come out and check things out. Better be safe than sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have a little bit of time left, and what I'd like to do now is to give you just a little scenario of how people, in, especially women, in certain situations could uh, prevent themselves from being a crime victim. Let's say a woman is out jogging. Jenny, what advice would you give her? I'd, I'd go advise with some uh, to jog either with a male friend or with another woman. Um, don't jog in a desolate area. Uh, jog where it's lighted. I avoid jogging at night. Um, jog in an area that you're familiar with. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's say you're going to be going on a trip, Carolyn, and you're going to be traveling alone by yourself, a woman, maybe driving to Oklahoma City and back. Number one, make sure that your car is in excellent shape. Check all your belts and your fluid levels. Uh, if you're having any problem with the car, make sure a mechanic checks it out before you get on the road. If you should have a breakdown, stay in your vehicle. Uh, keep the doors locked. And if someone stops, ask them to notify the uh, highway patrol and ask for assistance at that point but stay with your vehicle and don't get in a car with someone else. They have those call police yes. um, little signs that you can get from Radio Shack and right. they have Radio Shack logo on one Put side and call police emergency on the right. other side and they have emergency phones on the turnpike and I, I would discourage uh, getting out of the vehicle and standing by the road oh, and get run definitely. over. <laughs> stay in it's the vehicle. Really bad. Okay. One of the nice tools that we have now and a lot of people are going to are cellular phones. Mm -hmm. and uh, women alone traveling with a cellular phone is very nice. They can make that, that emergency call. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's say someone does see a crime in progress. What type of information, Jenny, do they need to have available oh. to call you? I would have, um, if it involves a vehicle, uh, if possible, a tag. Uh, direction of travel, how many people in the car, what they were wearing, the color of the vehicle, uh, uh, the description of the suspects in the vehicle is real important. We would love to have a tag number. We don't always get it. The direction of travel. Make sure that you know what way they're going if you can, if all possible. Mm -hmm. If someone was interested, Carolyn, in having a crime prevention program, where would they call? Rogers County Sheriff's Office, 341-3535, and ask for me. Okay, great. Well, I'd like to thank both of you for joining us today. You've given us some really practical thank and useful you, advice in helping us deal with uh, this big prevention problem, being alert to crimes. I'd like to thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time on The Next In Touch. Have a good week. I'm Jean Heck. RSC-TV, KRSC, Claremore.